Today we are going to speak about the Trinity. The Trinity is that really difficult thing Christians call God, God that is, Father or Mother, Son, and Holy Spirit. The one that works in three parts, but is equal and is one God. I know, it could be a little bit confusing at times. However, though a little confusing, this video is going to speak about reclaiming the Trinity and why such an important concept in theology and Christianity needs to be taken out of isolation to re-invite the diverse true in God that is love back into our faiths and back into our lives. Lastly, this video will end with introducing an old but new way slash symbol one can use to speak about the Trinity in our lives. Before we get into what people say about the Trinity, let's begin with a definition from the Episcopal website. It explains Trinity as one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity is a perfect relationship of love, which neither unity nor distance of divine person is compromised. God's life is understood to be dynamic, loving, and available to be shared in relationship with humanity for salvation. When I began to research the Trinity, there was so much information out there. So much websites, so much articles, so much video, so much pictures, so much books trying to explain and debunk what is the trinity my brain felt like it was on overload it was very interesting because there's so much things that came from this research trinity was explained by so many as the foundation for christianity people asked so many questions it expressed how trinity is there to help us understand what God is like. Trinity is a mystery. Trinity is God three in one. It explained how Trinity is not one God revealing himself in three forms or three different gods. There's so much on the Trinity. For so long, theologians have tried to conceptualize the Trinity. Has the Trinity been so hard for us to understand that unconsciously we have isolated it? Kind of like that really difficult child in class that no one can fully understand, that causes outbursts, disruption, and even interrupts the flow of the class. This child can be so challenging to work with in order for the class to continue, the teacher will ask the child to leave. In some sense, is the Trinity the same child? It can be so difficult to understand, causes disruption in our faith, and sometimes because it can be so challenging, it interrupts our faith. Have we unconsciously isolated the Trinity, just like that very difficult kid in class? because sometimes it is easier to remove what is difficult than try to work with it or work it out. Truthfully, one can agree that sometimes isolating the Trinity can be a relief because trying to make sense of it can only cause more distance. At the same time, even though it is sometimes never fully understood, we have to keep acknowledging it, reading on it, praying about it, teaching it, and preaching about it. Because if we do not, this true and diverse God that is love is not fully being lived out. So how do we speak about this mystery that is Trinity? Anne-Marie Mangoven states, The word mystery seems too simple a solution unless we recognize that theologically, mystery means that the reality is far too profound for humankind to understand it fully. A theological mystery is a reality about which we can always know more. Mengoven explains this mystery in a way that is more attainable. 
She takes this challenging kid in theology and gives us a different approach in allowing this mystery to unpack in our lives and faith. If we see this holy mystery, as Mangavin puts it, as something we may never fully understand, but is a reality that we can learn more on, we can move towards embracing this complicated part of theology in our Christian faith and in our lives. This can hopefully allow us to take the Trinity out of isolation. This can invite us all as Christians to reclaim our relationship with the triune God. Not that it will ever be perfect, but at least it will be fully present and allow us to acknowledge this diverse triune God that is love. Which through this, we can learn that God is diverse and love. And this gift is shared with us and for us to share with others. Making the switch from having to fully understand the Trinity to this reality that is present in our lives that we can continue to learn more on takes the pressure of having to know it all. And once that pressure is taken away, the things that theologians have been writing on and speaking about start to make more sense and start to develop this theme of love and diversity throughout this Trinitarian view. So what are scholars saying about this triune God that is diverse and is love? This next section will display quotes from three different scholars. As the quotes are being displayed, Start to reflect on what are common themes that you see. Where is love and diversity playing out? And how is this love and diversity connected to God and then connected to us?
This video in reflection is meant to help us go deeper in unpacking the Trinity in our own lives. Knowing that we may never fully understand all that is this triune God. However, we can move closer and we can learn more each and every day. And how this diverse triune God that is love not only plays out in our own lives, but how we interact with the world around us. This God that is love and diverse. This God that represents love and diversity. Not only flows within us, but connects us and fills the world around us. This last portion of the video will be introducing after doing my own reflection and research how the trinity is symbolized in my own life this is only one way there's so many more representations and symbols and not that there can ever be something that fully represents this trinity but for me a way that i start to conceptualize it in my own life you may not fully agree with this but this is just one way and i invite you to understand and explore as I understand and explored within your own lives. For so long, we have been trying to find a symbol that can represent the Trinity, God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. How can one explain this triune God, God that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but is one God? We work to get closer to this holy mystery every single day. For so long, the cross has been the symbol that goes with Jesus. Jesus suffered and died on this cross for us to be able to move towards salvation. Jesus dying on the cross paved the way for us to know God and God to be reachable. This cross that has been a symbol of suffering for so long can also be a symbol for our triune God. The cross has three points and one fourth point. The three points, which are equal and connected, can represent God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. The long point on the bottom is leading to the three points, or in the other words, the path to our triune God. Jesus literally died on this cross, which through God's ultimate act of love, this path was finally paved for us humans. This diverse triune God is love. And because of this ultimate act of love through Jesus, sent by the Holy Spirit, God reveals God's self to us. Because of this diverse triune God that is love, which is revealed to us on the cross, this love and diversity is shared with us, for us, and for us to share with others. And what makes this more powerful is that Peter and others who died upside down on this cross literally died on the pathway that leads to our triune God.